The second thing that it does, that the Supreme Court does, is it says that <coughs> cities can regulate buildings to uh, create community character. And in practice, what this means is cities look at their at their neighborhoods and they're like, well, what kind of neighborhoods would we like to have? What would, what would we like our neighborhoods to look like? And most of them decide what we would like our neighborhoods to look like is lots of single family homes with yards uh, and, and trees and all of that. Like the suburbs. Like the suburbs, yeah. The, this is sort of the growth of the suburbs um, and people are sort of aspiring to that. And so over the course of the 20th century, um, these zoning restrictions, these character restrictions, become more and more and more uh, restrictive until you get to the point today, and it's been like this for a while, where if you took a map of an American city and you threw a dart at it, there would be like an 80 to 90% chance that you would hit a place where it's illegal to build apartments or condos. It is not allowed by law. You can only build single family homes. You might think that Chicago is an exception to that, but you would be wrong. Um, this is a map I made using the city's open zoning data. Uh, everything in yellow in this map is a place where you can't build any housing at all because it's industrial or it's uh, parkland. Um, everything in red here is places where you can only build single family homes. Apartments and condos are illegal everywhere that's red. And as you can see, that is the vast majority of the city. And in fact, this map is actually worse than it looks because in most of the black areas, especially on the north side where there are fewer vacant lots, um, the zoning regulations are set at basically exactly where the neighborhood already is. So if you have a neighborhood of three and four story buildings, the zoning code says you cannot build anything taller than three or four stories. Basically freezes neighborhoods where they are. How did that happen? How did, how did it get that way? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a... From the 1920s on, it was a gradual process. There were sort of like waves uh, of, of new zoning codes, and each one generally was more restrictive than the one before. And then uh, specifically about Lincoln Park, where if you want to build an apartment in Lincoln Park, it's super hard, not just because of the NIMBYs, but because of the law. Right. And the reason that happened is that, see the really bright yellow area on the lakeshore? That's how the senior daily tried to keep people in the city. He said, look at your nice luxury, luxury buildings designed by Nice Van Der Rohe. Come here. And as that started to keep its way up, people go as a backlash in Lincoln Park, Lake, et cetera. And then that's why it's got shut down so you can't build anything new there. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. One thing to, to sort of like visualize this really quickly, how this happened. Like, if you look at the North Lakefront, it is lined with high rises, residential high rises from like the 50s, 60s, and 70s when the city was like hemorrhaging population. Like Chicago was not in a great place in those places, but it was still building huge amounts of housing on the North Lakefront. Um, if you look at the North Lakefront and look for buildings, high rises built in the last 10 years when the city has been booming, at least the north side has been booming, there's like, there's literally two, I think. I think there have been two high rises built on the North Lakefront uh, in the last like 15 years. Anyway, um, one, I should say, one really big exception to this is downtown, where, as you may have noticed if you've been there, uh, you can really build quite a lot. But in the, sub in, in the neighborhoods, in the neighborhoods, and really, really close outside of downtown, that drops down dramatically. 